All right, hopefully you, oh, hopefully uh, you got yourself a nice little snack. I got my beverage here. So welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Jessica Ayala. I'm a licensed clinical social worker here at USC at the Center for Work and Family Life. So today's Thriving Thursday topic is digital detox, yes, this thing, and mental health. What is it and why we should do it? So for those of you who are here, there's probably some curiosity as, you know, what, it is, what this is. So I'm just going to give a, run, a rundown of our agenda, our introduction. What is digital detox? Um, it's not like a cleanse. Well, kind of is, yeah. Why should we do it? How do we do it? And then closing. So for any of you who have questions or just comments, you can type in the chat. Um, if you are feeling something that you like, throw up an emoji. Um, we want to try to make it really fun and um, have a nice exchange. So here's the introduction. You know, there's a quote from Marie Curie, nothing in life is to be feared. It is the only to be understood. Now is the time to understand more so that we may fear less. So we don't want to fear this phone. We want it. It's great. It has a lot of useful things in here. And so with that, I'm going to read a passage from a book called How to Break Up with Your Cell Phone by Katherine Price. So let's do this for a minute. Dear phone, I still remember the first time we met. You were an expensive new gadget available only through AT&T. Do you guys remember that? Oh, I was a person who could recite my best friend's phone numbers from memory. Then I held you in my hand and the things started moving fast. It wasn't long before we were doing everything together. We're inseparable now, you and I, cell phone. You're the last thing I touch before I go to bed and the first thing I reach for in the morning. You remember my doctor's appointments, my shopping list, and even my anniversary. You, you provide gifts and festive emojis that I can send to friends on their birthdays. So that rather than feeling hurt that I'm texting instead of calling, they think, ooh, and an animated balloons. You make it possible for avoidance of strategies to be construed as thoughtfulness. And for this, I'm so grateful. So hopefully this phone it does, it provides service, but it's also part of a relationship. So according to Catherine Price, the author of the book that I just read, she describes to break up your phone is just to unplug it, to separate and giving yourself, giving yourself a chance to stop and think, be mindful. It is a relationship, right? Just like with anything else in life. Ask yourself what parts of your relationship with your phone is not working, is working and not working. Um, so kind of ponder on that. Let's see. Let's ask ourselves, why should we do it? Ask yourself, are you setting boundaries off and online with this thing? Phone? How aware are you using your tech slash phone? Why you use it? Why do you use your phone tech? Well, I use this to call people. I use this, especially now that I have kids, I use it a lot. And sometimes I just use it because I'm bored. There's nothing else to do. But I also use it for my rings because I close my rings on my iPhone on watch, on my Apple Watch. So I use that too. And then ask yourself, are you aware of that your phone is manipulating you? How and why? Oh my gosh, notifications. I turn my notifications off and I also have a cover so I don't see anything. So I just put it down out of sight, out of mind. Just ask yourself your, these questions. And the last one is, are you aware of the effects your phone has on your brain? We'll get a little bit more in depth with that later on in this little talk. So the book that I was reading that I referenced, Catherine Price, um, she has this, she included this survey from Dr. David Greenfield, who's a, there's actually a Center for Internet Technology and Addiction um, Psychiatry at the University of Connecticut, as you can see. And he has a 15 point question. And I just thought I'd pull some questions. So if you want, put in the chat, respond. Um, Respond to these questions and just put in the chat. Do you find yourself spending more time on your cell or smartphone than you realize? 
or do you find yourself mindlessly passing time on a regular basis by starting at your cell phone or smartphone? Just type in the chat if you want. Um, we're gonna go on to the next slide. Ooh, let's see here. Two chats, let's see. Yes, yes. So anyways, I do too. So we're, everybody who has a smartphone probably does this, well, except for my mom. She doesn't really have a smartphone, so, but she's 85. Uh, let's go on to the next slide. So does this feel like you? Do you feel like you're attached to your phone or can you put it down? Why should we do it? Addiction. Do you think a, you could be addicted to your cell phone? Well, according to the, the research I found and the definition of addiction is a condition in which a person engages in use of a substance or a behavior for which the rewarding effects provide a compelling incentive to repeatedly pursue the behavior despite detrimental consequences. Yeah, according to Newport, I think this qualifies as an addiction. And remember, phones changed over the years. So we went from this, remember rotary phones? Raise your hand or give a shout out, put an emoji, remember these emojis. Uh, cell phone. We went from this, thank you, Julie, to this. Wow. So, quote, your telephone of the 1970s didn't have thousands of engineers on the other side of the telephone who were redesigning it to be more and more persuasive. So, we went from this, and now we have people behind the cell phone giving you what you want, keeping you on the phone constantly. And also, too, you have to remember that during the pandemic that this little guy was our lifeline. That's how we connected. I'm doing it right now. I'm using technology and I'm using Zoom. So that's a plus for that. But let's think of some other things of why we should do digital detox. Here's some facts. Did you know that on an average Americans spend more than four hours a day on their phones. That amounts to 28 hours a week, 112 hours a month, or 56 full days. That is crazy. So the cell phone is kind of like a Trojan horse. It's, it's, we don't know like what's behind it. It's great, we get distracted, but it's kind of like a you know, Trojan horse and even social media. It also has effects on our mental health. It increases depression, especially in teens. A lot of these teens are growing up with Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook. You know, people are totally judging them when they do things, how they do things. It increases anxiety. It affects our attention. So if you're scrolling all the time, we don't even know how to like, if you're scrolling, you're just scrolling. And then you're not reading because, because of the internet articles, we tend to, to skim through. And that's why it's so important to read books and stuff because it affects our atten attention, which changes our behaviors. It changes our brains. And so if we're constantly wiring different types of chemicals in our brains, it's gonna, we're gonna stay up more, therefore we're not gonna sleep as much. And if we don't sleep, it's gonna affect our mood. And of course, we're gonna affect the memory because I can't remember phone numbers anymore. Oh, there's so many things that I used to do that, I depend on my phone. Yeah, so endless scrolling. Who does here Instagram? I don't have an Instagram. Um, just give me an emoji if you guys do that. So here's the thing, the scrolling, that's part of the dopamine. Um, anybody know what dopamine is? Well, I'll tell you. Think of dopamine as brain chemical. So it's responsible for making us feel excited, excited positive or negative rewards. So phones are different in the tense that that's what they're designed to do. So let's say, for instance, I'm hungry and I like Thanksgiving, you know how you eat so much at Thanksgiving or at a family meal and you're just eating. At some point you don't, you stop because you're full. Well, our bodies has this mechanism that says, okay, you're full, stop eating. And you stop with the cell phone. We don't have that mechanism and it doesn't have, they're not designed with stopping cues. So 
you would have to be really mindful. That's why we scroll and before you know it, it's an hour past. Keep scrolling. Oh, because we're getting hits of dopamine. Ooh, this feels good. Yes, yeah. Oh, somebody liked my post. Oh, somebody liked what I was wearing. So we're constantly getting that reinforcement. And so we're getting those hits of dopamine and we're users, just like somebody who, you know, is addicted. They're called users. We're, you know, when they say user-friendly, oh, yeah, that's a user-friendly app. Think about it. Next slide. So how do we do it? The first thing that you want to do is bring awareness. So obviously, if you come to this Thriving Thursday, there's some awareness or some curiosity like, yeah, what is this about? So a, there's a cycle of change where um, developed by Proskaska, I'm sorry if I mispronounce his name, and De Clementi. There's six stages. And the first, the first stage is pre-contemplation. Second stage, contemplation. Third is preparation. Fourth is action, five is maintenance, and six is termination. So even the fact that you're here in awareness, if you even think about your phone, you're already in the stage one, and we're gonna go over that. Let's go over to the next slide. So how do we do it? So pre-contemplation is the stage are lacking interest in change and having no plan or intention to change. So you're like, okay, I'm gonna to go to this webinar or this talk and I'm just gonna see what happens. So it could be that you're unaware or you go with a friend and say, yeah, come with me to this talk. Let's just, just see what happens. And then you go and maybe you learn some things, right? So here's the other thing. Then once you go in that stage, then you go into this stage. Contemplation, people become aware of the problem associated with the behavior. However, they're ambi ambivalent. So they're not sure about whether or not it's worth it. Should I, shouldn't I? So again, you're, you're, you're kind of, you, there's a seed planted. You're like, maybe I shouldn't. No, I don't have a problem. Well, maybe I do, going that back and forth. And then preparation, at this stage, people accept responsibility to change their behavior they evaluate and select techniques for behavior. So for the cell phone, say, you know what? I'm not gonna charge you bye-bye night time. I'm gonna put you in a different area. I have a two-story house, so I'm gonna put you downstairs. That way I'm learning little techniques. And then action, that's what I did. I'm at that stage that people engage in self-directed behavioral change efforts while gaining new insights and developing new skills. Like I'm purposely gonna turn off my notice, notification. And, you know, between stages two and three, a decision is made. People conclude that the negative of their behavior outweighs the positive. So people will choose to change their behavior. They make that commitment to change. And this decision represents an event, not a process. So the stage three proper, you know, again, is, is developing a plan to make the needed changes, building confidence and commitment to change and having the intention to change within one month. So that's why they always do the 21 days, like let's do a 21 days detox because that's giving you time to gain momentum and for change, which is super cool. And then when you get to action, again, these are self-directed outside help may be sought. So maybe you wanna get a buddy, like, hey, let's do this together. Um, you know, Characteristics of the stage includes curiosity, choosing a new behavior, learning to overcome the tendencies toward unwanted behavior and engaging in a chain action for six months. So preparation, you could take a month to prepare. And then once you decide, then that goes into action and that those, those actions engaging in change reactions for less than six months. So this is a process, it doesn't happen overnight. You know, it's that, that cliche, this is not, you know, it's a marathon, you know, not a, not a sprint. So then maintenance is, People in maintenance stages have mastered the ability to sustain a new behavior. So they actually change what's going on. So they have established a new behavior pattern and self-control. So characteristics of this stage include remaining alert to high risk situations like, okay, I'm not gonna, with the phone, you might wanna be like um, high risk. Okay, so I'm gonna just, Turn off my notifications, but my, you know, when it comes to family or family emergencies, at least I have that. Um, I'm not going to turn on all my notifications. I'm just going to keep ones like my text or phone, whatever that may be. And then the sixth stage is termination. 
which is you adapted a new self-image consistent with desired behavior and lifestyle. They do not react to the temptation of any situation. So for instance, let's say you were taking this to the bathroom. Actually, this happened. I was at a restaurant with my family the other day and there was a person in the restroom on the phone, like texting and talking at the same time. Um, so I guess, you know, that was tempting. I don't know. Um, but that's an example. So characteristics of this stage include confidence, enjoying self-control, and appreciation of a healthier and happier life. Um, so I wanted to go over some helpful tips. Um, these are some basic tips. Again, something as so simple as getting a cover for your phone. Um, I have a cover on mine. And I don't see when, and I always put it on um, vibrate. So I don't hear it ring. And again, this is something that works for me. Um, so that works. So something as simple as getting a cover. The other one, as you can see, is turning off notifications. So you want to turn off your notifications. And because every time the notification comes on, right, the light goes on, especially if you don't have a cover. So, but if you have a cover, you can't see it. Another thing helpful tip is a buddy. Have somebody do that. I work out on weekends and I have accountability partner for working out in case like I am like lagging, but it's also good when you have somebody who's going to be supportive of you and, and go through the journey with you. Um, another helpful tip is putting devices away during meal times. So we don't have devices. Um, we eat together as a family. So if we're going out or anything, we don't bring our phones. Um, the other thing that you can do too is keeping chargers in a community, like a common area. So for instance, don't keep it by your bed, put it in the kitchen, plug there. You just want to make healthy boundaries with your phone and not take it with you everywhere you go. Um, these are little, just little tips. And if you guys want to share some you know, tips that maybe was helpful for you, please feel free to do so. Um, and then if you look at this little section, which is resources, there's a couple of books. So I brought them with me so you can actually see what they look like. So the first one is this, Digital Minimalism by Carl Newport. This is an excellent book, um, really cool. And then I also used this book, 10 Arguments for Deleting Your Social Media Accounts Right By Now. <laughs> this is right now. And he gives 10 reasons as to the, the 10 arguments, which are really cool. Um, so this is a small book. And then this is the one, as you can see with all my little post-it notes, um, how to break up with your phone. And this is in the first couple of slides. This is a really good book. And the coolest thing about this book is, and I have no affiliation with this author, um, this is just such a great resource. It's very funny. It's an easy read. And then she gives you a breakup section. So the last, second part of the book, she goes week by week, which is really, really, really cool. So she actually goes into breaking up with your phone for the good. So again, this is a really good book. And then there's some really cool websites, a social dilemma. Um, there's a website. Yes, that's part of the Netflix uh, video. So if you haven't seen that, um, that's pretty interesting about what it does and how they track. And then a really good website, it's time to log off. So that's, a, that's um, I believe that particular website is um, from Europe. Um, and they, they give you like, an, again, um, guideline or book how to, you know, digital detox. Um, just the same as any type of supportive services. And then some apps, cold turkey is a good app, or just turning off your notifications too. Um, that helps a lot. Um, not downloading a lot of new apps. Um, and then and these books too, they strongly suggest erasing social media, social media apps altogether. Um, so these are just offerings and hopefully they're helpful. Also, I wanted to point out this month is May. It's also Mental Health um, Awareness. 
And again, my name is Jessica Ayala. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and I work at the Center for Work and Family Life. So again, if you need some service with, you know, counseling, anything, we offer free and confidential work-life resources for benefit eligible employees. Our number is 213-821-0800. We're available 24 seven. You don't wanna pick up the phone. <laughs> it's kind of an oxymoron because we're doing digital detox, but our, 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 our uh, Email is cwfl at usc.edu. Oh, yeah, have a comment. All right. Okay, thank you for doing that. Um, any questions? We have some time. So feel free to ask away. You can unmute yourself or type something in the chat. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this small, cute little presentation. Oh, wait, we have a, a comment. Hang on one second. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You guys are awesome. But if you have any questions, you know, again, here's the contact information. We're here to provide support to you, to our Trojan family on both campuses, so UPC and Health Sciences. So we're just one big happy Trojan family. And remember your cell phone is a Trojan horse. So be very mindful of that. So the takeaways today, I hope this brought awareness to you. And hopefully that awareness will create change. So be well, be blessed, and thank you for attending.